Hey, I recently bought a DJI Mavic Pro and I took it to Colorado for our spring break vacation and I found it invaluable for providing a perspective that you can't get any other way with any other tool. And specifically on this trip, I shot some panoramas of the mountain range. And I noticed that because I shoot everything at 24 frames per second, I was getting quite a bit of judder. Now I know there's a rule associated with panning at 24 frames per second, and if you're not familiar with that, there's a lot of good resources in YouTube and out on the internet uh, as far as the speed that you can pan based on the frames per second, the camera, the lens, and your focal length. But in general, you would want to pan at no more than seven seconds from the one edge of the frame to the other. Well, it's a little hard to judge that uh, when you're controlling a drone. Also, you may want to cover a broader distance than you can get, and you don't want to spend you know, 20, 14, 21 seconds of the actual uh, film to you know, show that panorama. So you need to move a little bit quicker. So what do you do if you're going to be shooting, uh, you're, you're producing your final output at 24 frames per second, but yet you don't want to have the judder in your footage. So I came up with a couple of options inside Premiere Pro, and I thought they would be worth sharing with you now. Okay, so here we are in Premiere Pro, and I'm going to, on my, I have a simple timeline here, uh, two, and, and I have two sequences that I've already created. Uh, one sequence is at 23.976, which is equivalent to 24 frames per second. The other is at 29.97 or 30 frames per second. Now I have one piece of footage that was shot at 30 frames per second, as you can see from the uh, uh, inspector here. And if I were to just preview that footage, and I have an in and out point already set that matches what we've been uh, looking at, uh, now it, you know it will play in smoothly because it's actually playing at 30 frames per second. Now I have a couple of options based on doing this. If I want that to look very similar uh, when I do it at 24 frames per second, uh, I have to have, a, first of all, a sequence at 24 frames per second. And my first option is just to take the footage and drop it directly into that sequence. Um, and I'm going to say keep existing settings. It tried to change the settings because it noticed that the clip did not match. I also want to make sure that I've set uh, to frame size so that I get a, a good match between the footage that I've shot and the actual uh, uh, size of the sequence itself. But I've dropped clearly from looking at this uh, sequence of this movie right here to a 30 frame per second image on there. So I'll render in to out. Okay, so now I've uh, pre-rendered that image. I'm running it at full resolution. And as you can see, even with that, uh, that clip, it is now kind of giving us that judder effect uh, as it moves across the screen. Now, what I can do differently is rather than uh, apply that at, based on this, 20, this 30 frame per second, I can actually right click on the clip and choose Modify Interpret Footage. And now under interpret footage, you'll see that we have some frame rate options. The first one is use frame rate from file or assume this frame rate. And here I have to type in 23.976, which is 24 frames per second. And, and it rounds it off when I do that and say, okay. Now if I draw, you'll notice that the footage in the project now says 23976. No longer says 30 frames per second. Now one of the things that happens is that I have to, uh, because I've changed the timing on this clip, my in and out points will no longer match. So I had to come back in and reset my in and out points uh, on the clip to be where I wanted them. And now I reinsert that clip and now I'm going to do a render in to out. Now you can see that we've rendered the file and we've changed the uh, uh, sequence settings to 23976 through interpret footage. It's much smoother than the original. So here's some examples of exactly what happens when we uh, apply these and you can see some side-by-side -side examples.
All right, so what we're looking at here on the left is the same footage on the left and the right, but on the left, the 30 frames per second footage is dropped directly onto the uh, 24 frame per second timeline. On the right, the 30 frames per second footage is first uh, interpreted to a different frame rate before it is dropped onto the timeline. So now we're gonna play this and you're gonna see a side-by-side -side comparison of the jerkiness on the left, which is evident, and you can see a little bit on the right, but it is much, much smoother. Now we have that same original footage on the drop directly onto the 2397 uh, timeline, and you can really see how jerky it is here. And then this is the footage that has the frame rate interpreted before it is applied to the timeline. Still has some jerkiness, but much more viewable, much easier to watch. Now, as a second uh, step, I actually took the footage after it had been interpreted to 23976 or 24 frames per second into After Effects and applied the time warp effect at 80% with frame blending. And I think this gives it another slight improvement uh, to the smoothness of the footage. So, as you can see, there's really no way to actually get rid of the judder at 24 frames per second, but there are ways to make it look a lot better. And I hope you found this helpful. Have a great day.